previously on Who's Next. Welcome to your first team challenge in a classic arm wrestling tournament. Whoever wins this picks the first quarterfinal matchup that'll take place in a few days. Instead of began picking somebody that he wanted to fight, he picked the person he wanted to fight least to fight the most wounded person on his team. So put one and two together. I think he's trying to get me out. First come, first serve. Whoever gets there first, take the bet. Everybody just getting trampled and stuff, throwing kids out the way. I'm glad you're on our team though, because you're definitely the wisest. Grandpas are always the wisest. You keep calling me that, we're gonna have round two a little early. Sewer rat is back. <laughs> Every muscle in the body is sore. I think Andy wants me to lose. Get the camera off of me. Bradley's the master of escapes. See you guys in three hours. Isaac probably thought that it'd be an easy out for him, but it took about 40, 41 minutes for him to get the finish. Isaac is really on track to win this show. He's a good kid, but he crosses the line a little bit. Sure. So, so I, I literally just woke up, like two minutes. I've been awake for two minutes. Let me see these glasses. Get your hands off me, bro. These are my glasses. Sit down, old man. He pushes me, and then he goes to take me down. And then he, he starts slapping me. I'm like, haha, we're just play fight. And he kind of starts slapping me hard. And I'm like, is this little serious? I um, wanted him to apologize. I wasn't trying to hurt him, but I think I did. Tell me you're sorry. Absolutely not. <laughs> this is why I will never homeschool my kid. He doesn't know who I am, and he doesn't know what I'm capable of. He treats me like a little kid. I've just had enough of him being my dad. He'll be the bigger man. We'll walk away. That's right. In the jungle, the older lion always wins. <laughs> he's a tough competitor. He's cool. He's uh, he's pretty fearless. We get along, but there's just some things that he's he's got to work on. I told you guys it'd be crazy here. Screw that old guy. Good eye, mice. How the I'm not saying that one. <laughs> Say it. No. It's alright. I'm gonna cuss the day in my life. I cussed, on, I cussed on accident once, but that was when I was a young man. Oh,
I thought we were definitely going to be doing some sort of shooting. Then we saw that huge ball jump out, and I was like, Jesus. Do this in their hips. Oh, Let's go. Oh, <laughs> you can take down a bull, you can take down Korak. <laughs> Better than the me. Mm. When we pulled up to the ranch, my heart completely dropped. I was thinking, these guys are going to make me ride a bull. I'm not doing it. <laughs> So they come here, they don't know what the challenge is going to be. We drive them out here in the middle of nowhere. They get out, they don't know what's going on. They're trying to figure it out. That's me, bro. Oh yeah, let's go. I can't spiral that. Let's go, bro. <laughs> bro, <laughs> who wrote this? Bro, make it mad. Let Pray. it go. You didn't know we're trying to kill you guys on this show. Nah, man, that's not gonna make me feel better. <laughs> I'll sign the waiver. Y'all never had a grapple 2,000 pounds, but. <laughs> you guys got good break falls, right? Never think that w that was gonna be. You completely caught us all blindsided. I don't want to die today. All right, gather around. Welcome to the Broken G Rodeo. I'm gonna introduce you to Cowboy Bailey here, one of the baddest motherfuckers in Texas, wanted in several states. Oh, yeah. You guys ever had any experience with cows or bulls or anything no. like that? Just you have. <laughs> Big Dan, you've dated some women like this in Puerto Rico. Oh <laughs> snap! And all honestly, we actually have a calf scramble for y'all. We have some smaller steers in here, stuff for y'all that y'all are gonna be chasing some ribbons on them. Oh, sick, okay. This would be sick, okay. Oh, yes, we're not riding it. Oh my gosh. Wow, that was so scary. Okay, guys, there's three rules here. Number one, you have to let the steer X the shoot and get about 15 feet away just to give the steer a good fighting chance. So that way, y'all don't just jump them on the get go. Second rule, we need to bring the whole ribbon to me all in one piece. I can't have a little small piece from the calf. I have to have the whole ribbon, not just one little small piece. Third rule is no arm bars, no Judy chopping, no, <laughs> no hoof hooks, no. <laughs> no. no, okay. Other than those three rules, y'all are able to do whatever y'all want. All right, we're gonna do a coin flip. Whoever wins the coin flip gets to decide who goes first and second. Red team won the first challenge, so we're gonna let Tim make the call. What are you going with, Tim? Heads or tails? Tails. Tails again. Yes! <laughs> yes! Blue team, you're gonna be going first. Let's go, let's go. There's a bunch of people going after it. It's gonna go one way. You wanna be there waiting. Because you don't wanna look like you're freaking running out, and then it's gonna turn around, and you just wanna stand there. And you're just gonna jump on it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three, blue team! Yeah, Flo put us in a pen with wild bulls. The first round, the bulls were going wild. They were energized. Like foaming from the mouth, charging at us. To be the first ones and to see that, we were, we were like, holy sh we have to catch these things. The adrenaline was pumping. He had freaking froth coming out of his mouth. I'm like, this freaking thing is rabid. This guy's gonna kill us. You have a lot of fear for something when you know it can kill you. Um, but to overcome that fear is, you know, a, a, a tournament in itself. One time, Nikki Ryan actually coached me through it, but I was like, it was coming right at me, and my right jiu-jitsu guy's normal like defense is not to sprawl. So I pulled guard, left butterfly hook in the middle, off balance it a little bit, it got off of me, so thank God I was okay. Luckily, Andrew Tackett, fearless, just dove through the air and took out, I think took down both balls, basically. Oh, that was crazy! Bro, oh, freaking was biting me. He was biting me, bro. 
Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Andrew Tech was fearless. He was just diving head first at these things and taking them down. They got him off pretty quick, a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. When I started doing jujitsu, I would have never thought it would have involved cattle rustling. We have giant animals out there that could kill us at any second. And I'm sending my guys out there to grab a ribbon off their tail. May God have mercy on their souls. So the feeling of that, the, like the cows coming out, yeah, I haven't felt like that in a long time. I'd much rather fight for another three hours. I go up, it looks at me, and I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm brave, I'm brave. I go up, it looks at me, and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want any part of that. We figured out a game plan. It would be me and the other stronger guys on the team would try to put it in a front headlock, and the fastest guy, Kyle Chambers, would go and grab the ribbon. Came tacky with no fear. Ended up getting it. Big Dan did awesome by just grabbing the bull by his uh, by his neck. I got his tail. Um, it was just really successful. I was happy that we won the first end of the challenge. Our strategy was let them go first, so we can get an idea of how this is going to work and make those bulls tired. And it worked, and we won pretty handily. I feel fantastic. Strategy worked out perfectly. Way faster time than the blue team. We're about to go 2-0, baby. Like I said, I called my shot. Yeah, the red team finished a little bit quicker. Uh, Kyle Chambers took the second one without them even taking the, the, the bowl down. He just ran up and took it off. I think the bulls were a little tired, or the Cavs were a little tired by that, that time. Woo! We're a city bull, but we out here throwing them guns. You know? All right, now it's time for round two of the challenge. It's gonna be the final round. Whoever wins this decides the next match on the show. Representing the red team, we're down to two guys now. We got Kyle Chambers, Big Dan. Representing the blue team, Isaac Michelle, Andrew Tackett. All right, Cowboy Bailey here is gonna to explain to you guys what you're doing in this round. All right, Bailey. All right, guys, in the second round, what we have here is shoot dogging. In the shoot dogging, basically what y'all are gonna be doing is gonna be getting into the shoot with the steer. The objective of the thing, is to turn the steer's head and lay him on the ground. And get all four feet up in the air. If y'all have ever seen a bulldogging or anything like that where guys jump off the horse and yeah. roll that, you're doing the exact same thing, except you're starting already on the steer in the chute. Main thing for y'all to do is, is to get the steer on the ground, rolled over with feet in the air. The person with the shortest time out of you four, that team is gonna win and then today make the selection for the next match. The red team had the shortest time in the round one. What are you going with? We're going first and third. Big Dan's kicking it off. All right, that puts you with this uh, with the pick for who goes second. Which one of your guys are you putting out there? We'll go with Tackett. That means Kyle Chambers is going third. Isaac Michelle is going fourth. All right, good luck, guys. Remember, whoever gets the shortest time, not as a team, just individually, that team wins and makes the selection for the next match. Okay, guys, stay strong. Let's rodeo, guys. Yes. <laughs> rodeo. Chalk up. What was going on through my head was like, yeah, I'm just pulling out of this challenge. I'm just gonna give the other team this. I'm like, there's no way that I'm gonna be dealing with a bull. It's just, it's a bull. I don't wanna have to deal with a bull. Like anybody in their right mind, if you didn't put a gun to their head, they wouldn't have to do this. But eventually I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm in this show. I'm giving it everything I got. Give me the bull. Ready? Let's do this. Am I getting in there? Come up here, man. Come in the chamber. Let's do this. Check me out. <laughs> Initially, I thought that they would be a little bit more of a calm cow, uh, that I would be able to walk out with it and then work to put it down. I did not know the moment that the cow 
was released, it would just bolt out. I had no idea that that would happen. So I was caught off guard and I, I think, I believe I would have been able to put it down if I changed my mindset. There's no excuses. The bull got me fair and square. But um, it was definitely crazy. I got dragged all the way across the ranch and yeah, that is a strong bull. Big Dan is a giant, very strong, and he was bigger than that bull. So I figured we win this right off the bat. We win first round easily. I'm surprised at how strong the bull was. Uh, the technique was okay, but we just didn't get the job done on that one. Let's go, Andrew! Yeah. Yeah, jump, if you start losing your balance, jump and let, jump. Her, let her pick you up and take you for, uh, five feet. And All right. Then so basically, you, All right, I'm ready, I'm ready, let's do this. Right. Let's go straight to it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, cowboy. There you go, just like that, come up from that side. Let's go, Andrew! We'll come out here just a second. You say win. Win. You got this! All road! A 165 pound human to pull a one ton animal down to the ground is extremely difficult. So we started on the headlock, it jumped out of the gate, it was bucky and stuff. So I jumped in there off of its buck and I did a forward roll. I got its neck to come underneath it and then it just forward rolled over the top of me. It rolled over my ribs and stuff and it landed on the ground. Then it started squirming so I got my top hook in over its arm and I was just holding on for dear life at that point. And everybody was just yelling, yo, you have it, you had it, let go. And I was like, shoot, I was like, I got it already? Andrew Tackett, I, I don't want to say he got lucky, but even the guys here were like, they've, they've never seen anything like that before. Hey, 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 hey. Never in a million years thought that he was going to do a front flip and take the bull down. Three seconds. Insane. Insane. Born to ride the destiny. Born to be a cowboy. Let's go. Our last hope is in Kyle. I believe in Kyle. Chambers, you gotta beat 3.7 seconds or the blue team gets the next pick. Oh man, it's super, super crazy. I'm super excited, of course, it's because it's something that's once in a lifetime, you know? I would never do this on my daily, you know? So to come out here and experience this stuff, it's like one of those things in like five, 10 years, you're gonna be like, man, it's one time when I was blah, blah, blah years old, I wrestled a bull, you know? There you go, just like that. You can put your hand right here in her nose. And you're gonna make sure you make sure you keep your feet in front of you when you're coming out. In front of me? Yeah. Ready? Go, Kyle! Go, Kyle! Go, Kyle! Go, Kyle! Hey! Hey! Let's go, Kyle! Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! Pull that thing down! Lead backwards, Kyle! Man, it was super tough. I had a good grip on it. I had my, my elbow crease on the horns. I had my top side hand grabbing a good chin strap. I was lifting up. I think I was controlling it for like 30 or 40 seconds, but my bull was just too tough, man. I had it facing the dirt, trying to go for it. But man, at, at the end of the day, I couldn't put the, the feet up to the air and I ended up giving up on it. I went last, we already won the challenge, so I was just doing it for a bit of fun. Let's get it! You ready? Yep. Get you some. I tried to tip it over. I got it in a good position, but I couldn't flip it. Isaac, change shag! This one's a two man job. And then time ran out eventually, but it was a fun experience. All right, that's time, that's time. Get your feet uh, on time. No. To draw, that thing's get off. Look at that. Get the <laughs> 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 <laughs>
a fun day today, super stoked. I got to do some, um, handle some balls. This is my first time. The steer was my toughest opponent I've faced yet, for sure. Because we lost, because Andrew Tackett is a cowboy, we did not win the challenge. They won, and they got to pick the fight. All right, the winners of the second team challenge, the blue team, everybody give it up for Andrew Tackett. MVP of the Rodeo Challenge here at the Okinji Ranch. What do you think about 3.7 seconds? Shoot, that's some world-class time there, man. <laughs> Let's go. Class, baby. All right, so since you guys won the second challenge, that means you get to pick the second quarterfinal matchup. We're going to break for a few minutes, and then you'll come back here and let us know who's going to go. All right, go. Now, there's only one logical choice. What is it? What's that? You were you against the other horse. The other cow -like bull? creature, yeah. I took down one bull, I can do it again. Let's go. Oh, right. you, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Blue right. team. We shout us out, Craig. Let's get the sewer out. Right. All right, right, do it. Let's go. Come on. Sewer rest style? Count it out. Count it out. On three, let's go, blue team. One, two, three. Blue, blue team. team. Murder, murder, kill. All right, blue team, you've had the time to go over there and decide who's going to be in the second quarter final matchup. First off, Craig, who are you going to pull out here to go next from the red team? Um, it is a tough decision. I'm going to have to pass it over. We've dealt with one bull today. We'll deal with another one. Big Dan. All right, Coach Sewerette, who's, who, who's coming out next from the blue team? Grab life by the horns. We're gonna have you out to wrangle this one, Andrew Tackett. Ooh. Let's go. <laughs> Taking down one bull, I can take down another. Um, I pick Big Dan, you know. That I feel like that's the only logical option for the fans, you know, smallest guy versus biggest guy. I'm gonna go out Big Dan just like I went at that bull by the horns, you know. All right, good luck. See you guys later this evening. 100 pound difference in the weight, huh? Yeah, I had a feeling that this one was coming. Uh, Big Dan, obviously it's a tough matchup for anyone, but I think Andrew is probably one of the people left that matches up with him the best. I'm very confident in that match. I'm excited to go against him. It's gonna be freaking me versus Big Dan. I'm psyched for this. You know, Big Dan is really big. He's technical. His name is Dan, and um, you know, I'm, I put a lot of work into this. Taking down one bull, I can take down another, you know? Let's go. Big Dan is a beast. I saw him training today. He's technical, he's powerful, and he has the mindset of a champion. At the end of the day, Big Dan takes it home, and I don't think it's gonna be close. I believe that of a better ability to enter into Andrew's legs and a 100-pound size advantage, and the ability to go for the submission. Strength and technique versus speed and technique. So it's gonna be a battle of a lifetime. Um, you guys are not gonna wanna miss it. It's gonna be sick. Much respect to Andrew. I know he's gonna go out there and throw down, and may the best man win. You're gonna move the couch? Yeah. Here you go. Take him down? Yeah. You literally think you're gonna take down me? I do think that. Oh. Andrew Tackett is. He's very fun, he's a, he's an aggressive uh, grappler. He works hard for everything he achieves, he trains every day. brother would always beat me up as a kid because you know the older brother always beats up the younger brother I would always just wake up wanting to be able to beat my brother um, it, every day I'd wake up in the mindset wanting to go train harder wanting to get better wanting to prove to my parents that I was not like a screw up that I was that I was good at what I did and then once I learned just to do it because I love it and then that's when my mindset really changed. Um, going out there and having fun. Going out there not proving to anybody or to myself that I'm good, but that I know I'm good and that I'm gonna have fun when I go out there. Yeah, my best friends were my siblings. My best friends were my parents. I was able to train day and night because of my schedule. I wasn't stuck in a school all day. Stretch your leg, stretch. No, no, stretch. Stretch your leg. 
No, don't see it. Put all the weight in that foot stand up. Growing up, homeschool was basically all I could ever ask for. Um, I didn't have a lot of friends growing up, but I'm a very people person. I like going out and just talking to random person, random people. As a kid, um, my dad would have go, to yeah. go and find me in the mall because I would wander off and just go start talking to random people. He would always tell me, like, Andrew, stranger danger. Keep to yourself. Don't just go talk to random people. I feel like why I'm here is to make a statement. I am able to win this and that I am confident in myself that I can win this and that all my hard work and all my hard training will pay off. It's going to be a marathon for all the competitors mentally and physically and I am both mentally and physically prepared for this so it's going to be fun. Winning the show means so much to me. I've been training since I was six years old. It would mean that my up and coming life training as a kid it would, it would mean that it's paying off. It would mean that I have a future in this sport. Can I get on? Ooh. No two yet. No two. No two. Ah, no! So today our first training session is at B Team headquarters owned by Craig Jones. Ooh. It's slightly awkward because we're in enemy territory. I see a bunch of security cameras. I don't feel too comfortable showing too many techniques in here because they will most likely steal it and try to use it against me in the future. But nonetheless, I'm here for my guys. We're here to get a sweat in. We're here to have some active recovery and get ready for the matches coming up this week. So they took control over the pick because they won the second challenge and they decided on Andrew Tackett versus me. That's a really good match and something I'm really looking forward to. He took down the bull and they thought that they could take me down. He had a match against Fabian Ramirez and Fabian was able to enter into his legs very easily and I believe I have the same ability, if not better, to enter into legs than Fabian. I believe that a clash between good leg lock defense and good leg lock offense is a very good clash of styles. But I do believe that a good leg lock offense can lead into other techniques such as hip heisting and guard passing which I chained together very well. Anybody can be strong, anybody can hold somebody down, anybody can be big and whatnot. But not anybody ha can have technique. And not a lot of people can pair good technique in a big person's body. I hope that people in this show learn that you can be respectful and be good at jujitsu, and that a heavyweight can't play jujitsu like a lightweight. Tag is the guy you're going against. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. Yeah. He's gonna put his legs in danger. Stuff, yeah. And I've trained with some of the guys on the other team, mm -hmm. and nobody really knows who I am. But the people who've trained with me know that I'm extremely good on the legs. But you can only hide your legs for so long, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, you'll be more offensive than him. Uh, you just trained with Isaac before? I have. All right, so you probably already know what to do with him. Yeah. <laughs> it's his Name is Big Dan for obvious reasons. I'm six foot seven and 275 pounds. I'm a blue belt. Nobody knows who I am, and I haven't won many things. My biggest goal in this life is to be an ADCC champion. I began Jiu Jitsu when I was 15 years old, and I loved it. But I didn't do it too seriously. I trained maybe three times a week. But as time went on, I realized that I truly loved the sport. So at 17 years old, I made the decision that I wanted to be the best in the world. So I decided that being in Pennsylvania, it wouldn't be the place for me to get good training. So 
I began commuting from Pennsylvania to New York City. I would wake up at 3 a.m., leave my house at 3.30 a.m., catch the 4.15 a.m. bus, get to New York around 7 a.m., take the train one stop to Hensel Gracie Academy in New York City, train at 7.45 a.m., and then at 12.30 p.m. In between classes, I would do my schoolwork and on the bus rides to and back from Hensel Gracie Academy. I knew that John Danaher is the best jiu-jitsu instructor in the world, and I know that Gordon Ryan's the best jiu-jitsu practitioner in the world. Every single day I feel like I'm improving. John spends so much time studying techniques and brings it, brings it to the classroom for us to learn. And if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be where I am today. The Puerto Rico experience was a positive one. I know that unfortunately there was some drama. It was definitely something amazing to know that at 19 years old I would be going to live on a tropical island indefinitely to pursue my career in jiu-jitsu. I knew that wherever the team went I would go and I'm very happy that I went. I made huge technical progress and I got the experience living on an island for nine months. So I, I teach from the, the, the bottom all the way up to, to standing. It's always the structure of my coaching and uh, Dan is in that initial phase of learning the bottom game and he's doing extremely well. I put no weight on their early competitions. For, for me that's just them getting used to the idea of performing in front of an audience and um, uh, so there's no pressure on the young fellow. He's just going to go out and have as many competitions as he can but I think it's fair to say he's not your average blue belt. He's, he's very very talented. I think that he's got an enormous amount of uh, potential for the future. He's highly intelligent, well-spoken young man and uh, as you see here, he's here every day training, he's a hard worker. When you're in, you're in, and every single day we're on the goal of getting better. Every day we're constantly evolving. Every day we're constantly working on new techniques, and we have our full devotion towards getting better at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I'm very thankful to be out here and be given the opportunity to train with such great people. Unfortunately, we were unable to build a school, and then we found ourselves in Austin, Texas, and I could say that I like it much more in Austin, Texas than in Puerto Rico. A lot of times, heavyweights won't pull guard. A lot of heavyweights won't enter into legs, but that's because they don't possess the physical attributes to do such a thing. I do, and my instructor, John Danaher, is coaching me on how to use that to its fullest potential. There's respect and there's trash talk, and then there's people who have fake respect and people who trash talk who mean well. So where were you this morning? I have no ill will towards anybody on this show. They're all great at what they do, and they all deserve to be here, and I believe may the best man win. If I win this show, it would be a huge stepping stone in my career, give me a lot of exposure on social media, I'm sure that it would make my instructor and teammates proud. I'm very new to this game. I know that all the work to win this competition has been done in the months and years before this competition. I'm here to show the world who I am, and now it's time to go out and perform. Him for probably about like five minutes to cool him out, <laughs> and then I'm gonna jump lock car. I want to have him. Uh, That's lock what I want to do. Lock car. Yeah. Yeah. So like, weigh the giant down. Yeah. I'm, I might bring a slingshot and a stone. <laughs> do a little David action. <laughs> I just, I think, I think especially if he pulls lateral movement and just moving around, like you can't follow. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like yeah. physically impossible. Like you're gonna. You're gonna find a corner to cut, you know? Yeah, I mean, my main goal is definitely to get on top. Yeah. I definitely wanna He's be... gonna pull, though, probably. I mean, if he He's pulls... He's like, oh, I'm just gonna pull single leg X and go outside heel. I mean, that's good, but then I'll just keep him away. I'll play more of uh, the Ty Rotolo, yeah. Ty Rotolo yeah. passing. Yeah, you're right. Try to get him tired, do a lot of circling around him, so he'll start spinning in movement. Maybe a flying knee cut or a Kimura yeah, or a Yeah, flying knee cut to the face. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, first day's training for both teams was a B team. Tim Spriggs was at 3 p.m. maybe, and we were around 4.35, so obviously we got to come in. Actually, I was having a coffee watching the security camera footage. All right, guys, we'll get started. Um, first of all, the last group of idiots didn't notice the cameras, so we're, go we're gonna start by watching some of their rounds. This is why we have Craig Jones as coaches. He's freaking smart. I like this. <laughs> We brought the guys in and we started off with some security camera footage, right? Which I think the guys were aware of, but still, we got to see some of them roll. I think I was watching Big Dan and Kyle Chambers go at it, so that was interesting. It's really important to study your opponent. Um, not to avoid their game, but to know what they're going to do so you can plan for it. Technically, it's probably trading, but if you're not trading, you're not trading. I, I just want to see the big guy do something. All right, just inside heel hooks. It's all inside heel hooks. I mean, to be honest, I don't think those guys have a lot of technique anyway, so we just wanted to watch the rolling, so not too much to be paranoid about. I think Big Dan is afraid of the small guys. Big guy versus small guy. I believe I'm I'll be able to break him. I'll be able to able to grab him by the horns and pull him to the ground. Yeah, well, what is your game plan for? For Big Dan? Yeah, so I know he's gonna pull guard. So if he starts to wrestle with me, I'm just gonna get as mean as possible and don't want to pull my head down. Yeah, and yeah, outside passing, frustrating, get him emotional. He was fatigued. He was out of breath after his 30 second match. I know. So he's gonna go full power and everything. 30 minute match, that's what I'm playing. 30 minute match, submit him at 30 minutes. And uh, to talk shit as it goes, the longer it goes, the more it favors you. So talk shit to him, get in his head. If I'm here, match head high until you lift the foot. And then just straight to it. Just frustrate him. Yeah. Another good one is if he's seated. You can pick him up inside. Inside. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Let me try that. I really like it. Yeah, that's super easy. Wow. Thank so you. Cool. Dang, Coach Craig over here. We, I don't think, I mean, if it goes past three, four minutes, I think you're gonna win the match for sure. Yeah, yeah, I just gonna make it past five minutes. That's, that was my goal. And he really doesn't handle physical match as well, so if he's down, don't be afraid to be like, clubbing hard, pushing yeah. the face. Oh, I love that stuff. If I can create like six scrambles, I think he'll break after that. Usually most people are like, around like five scrambles, they start to see them breathing, and I think Big Dan might even be like one scramble, and he'll be like, <gasps> and then eventually he'll stop doing that, and that's when I'll start actually trying to pass and attack stuff, going for his back, choking his face. Like, Fingers up the nose. <laughs> yeah, definitely get in his head in the house. Oh yeah, so. no I have bro, I have. I was like, bro, that bull was so easy to take down. I'm like, I can't believe you didn't do it. I'm like, I think of thought a big strong guy like you could take it down. <laughs> it's so fun I'm messing with him, but he, he, he takes, Messing with pretty, he just doesn't say anything. He's just like, I was like, I know I'm getting to you. <laughs> we have more psychological strategies. Yeah, oh yeah, I can't go head to head technically with a guy 100 pounds heavier. I think he's going to take it into deep water and Big Dan's gonna, gonna fall. fighting and I think he needs a lot of good luck so I think it'd be cool if I you know, gave him a good luck wish with this flower you know I'm sorry sorry poor Dan love you I have to have to fight you though I'm sorry Frank and Dan love you Andrew sincerely yours forever roses are red violets are blue sugar is sweet and so are you here you go big Dan I'm sorry we have to fight it's your flower you know, there's a bunch of big Dan's in life. There's a bunch of people out there that might intimidate you because of their size, but you were given this body for a reason. You were given your height, you were given your weight, you were given your size for a reason. So you gotta work with what you got. Don't be afraid of nobody. Today I'm going to be fighting Andrew Tackett. Yeah. Nothing really concerns me too much about this match. Competition experiences with Andrew Tackett. He's gonna be much better at dealing with pressure. 
Uh, he's faced high level leg lockers before, obviously no one as big as Big Dan, but I think really as this match even hits two or three minutes in, you're going to be seeing Big Dan breathe heavy and he's really going to be worried, especially about the optics of losing to a little guy like Andrew. And Andrew's coming in with pure confidence. Obviously he wanted that match, he called that match out, so that's got to that's got to put something in the back of Big Dan's head. Big Dan is a very serious man. Big Dan is a very dangerous fellow, and he's hungry. He's a young guy. He's living his dream, and I don't think he's going to let anybody get in his way. My confidence level are through the roof, you know. Um, I'm not prideful at all in this because I know pride is a devil and it will, it will shatter you and it will tear you down. But I am very confident in my abilities. I'm very confident in myself. Um, I've trained hard for this and I've stayed dedicated and focused, so I'm ready. This match could either be very short or very long. I do not know, but I'm prepared for whatever outcome happens. To win this match would be great for me because I'd be able to progress on to the next round in this tournament and work towards my goal of winning this entire show. You know, nobody likes to lose. Everybody likes to win, so to win today would mean would mean Andrew Tackett is doing good, that he's on the right path, and that he's one step closer to that 10K and that victory, you know? So it would mean a lot yeah. to me. Dan has told me several times that he's not here to play around. I saw what he did to get into the house, and he has every intention to rip Andrew Tackett's foot off of his body. And I believe him. I saw him train, I see how focused he is. He's been chomping at the bit to get his hands on somebody. Unfortunately for Andrew Tackett, he's the guy. I know he's going to be very strong. I know he's going to be very technical off the bout, but you know, once that cardio starts to go, there's not much technique that he'll have left for me, so I'm excited altogether. This match is going to be fire. This match is definitely going to be for the fans. You know, it's going to be David versus Goliath. It's going to be intense, and I'm excited. I'm ready for everything, so I'm just excited, you know. I'm just excited. <laughs> This is a submission only, no time limit match. The only way for either fighter to win is by submission. The first to force their opponent to tap out will walk away with the victory. They will be on the mat for as long as it takes. 30 seconds, 30 minutes, or 30 hours. Only one will walk away with a submission victory. Strikes and slams will not be allowed and will result in a disqualification but all submissions are legal. There are no judges' decisions, there are no points, and there is no other way out. The only thing that will stop the match is a submission. Welcome to Who's Next. It's time to get after it. The second quarterfinal matchup will be from Team Spriggs, Dan Monasoyu, up against Andrew Tackett from Team Jones. Fight! Let's go, Big Dan! Good. Circle, circle, assembly. Yep. Circle. Good scratch. Story. Nap, nap, nap. Good. Pummel that leg on the side. Nice. Good pummel. Okay. Good. Get that leg out. Yeah. Yeah. Cleared the first one. Yeah, go, get, go, You're good. We expected this, Big Dan. We expected it. That's his only offense, Big Dan. Keep it focused. Keep focus. And over and over. <laughs> hey, you said stay calm, cool, and collected, Dan. Andrew, make sure you tap early, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So, so you got this, big Dan. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. You're fine. Yeah. Oh, it's big Dan. There you go. I told you he was going to do that. So I told you he was going to try to Tack it. That's five leg locks. Clear. Exactly like we went over in the film. You keep your eyes on him. Stay focused. Keep playing your game. It's going to open up. He's trying to elevate the cross Ashi. Yeah, point that knee up. Beautiful. Slippery. You can stand back up anytime. He's going to look for body locks. Nice. Get crazy with the bed. Beautiful. Yeah, 
Andrew, you've cleared every attack. Yeah, yep, cross face under hook. Clear the foot off the head. Put off the head. Stay still. Take it home. Take it home. Take it home. Take it home. Let's go, Big Let's go, Big Dan. Let's go, Big Dan. He gave that everything. He gave that everything, Andrew. That wasn't oh, everything. Shit. It's all right, Big Dan. You just cleared his best attack. Oh. Yep. Keep capping that hip line, man. You're doing perfect. Okay, New York Nick. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it, Big Dan. Back to the mat, Dan. Back to the mat. Back to the mat. Body. Andrew, he's breaking. <laughs> oh! Basically, you know, we started off, I saw him not breathing at all. He was coming forward. He was playing very conservative, conservative. I was like, I ain't letting you play conservative. So I started picking up the pressure. I started circling side to side, making him invert, making him scoop forward on me, you know, gaining his head, pushing his face, slapping down his head, making him feel uncomfortable on both sides, uncomfortable every direction. And then, you know, he started just to break. I, Pulled down the top hand, shot across, lifted his chin up, just like Coach Craig told me to. Slid my opposite hander and blocked it up. And you know what I did after that? I squeezed and I finished it. I expected him to come out physical, like he did, and uh, start hunting for my back. Just didn't expect him to get there. Uh, straight ankle lock's my strongest attack, and I dedicated my time to get there. But uh, actually, when I had the straight ankle lock, I heard his foot pop five or six times, but he just wouldn't tap to it. So I genuinely gave it everything I had and just didn't tap to it. So I was a little bit tired after that. He got to my back. I messed up on that and uh, good on the back. So he finished me from there. Andrew was busy humping his head, slapping him, pushing him around, just trying to get in his head because really this guy's got a hundred pound advantage. If that match goes after a minute, kind of looks pretty pretty stupid out there, you know what I mean? The longer that match goes, the more stupid you feel not being able to attack this guy. But it just showed Dan's game isn't diverse. He had no plan B. A kid 100 pounds smaller, he should have got up, taken him down, passed his guard, submitted. That's the obvious thing he should have done, but instead he stuck, didn't change game plan. Tim didn't tell him to change game plan. He just kept trying to pull him into leg locks and basically kept getting passed and ultimately got his back taken. Of course, we know you know you have a very um, uh, you know, very great coach in John Gallagher and Gordon Ryan. What do you think they would say to you after this match? They would probably tell me to go jump off a bridge. <laughs> Dan will be back. You will see Dan on the Who's Number One stage very soon. Once he's 110 percent, everybody better watch out. You know, I've been putting on more of a confident face and high energy, but. When I come down to it out of my heart, this means the world to me. I've wanted this my whole life. I've wanted opportunities like this to happen my whole life, and now they're happening. Broken mentally, then I'm broken physically. You know, I went out there to put on a show. I wasn't gonna back down from the giant. Congratulations to the fearless Andrew Tackett on his submission victory. Andrew moves on to the semifinals and keeps himself in the running for the grand prize and title of Who's Next Champion. You know, you look pretty badass now. I mean, you called out the biggest guy in the show and went out there tapped. You know, how, how long do you think the match was? 
12 minutes, 10 minutes? Eight and a half. Eight and a half, yeah. whoa. Long eight That's and a half minutes though, huh? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I love you all. I love all of you guys. Thank I love you, God. Thank you, Hollywood Mike. Yes, sir. I love Hollywood Mike. He's, he's the best. Thank you, Craig Jones. Thank you to my team. I'm here to stay, and I'm here to win. Nothing less. Next time on Who's Next. <laughs> he woke up screaming like a little girl. I'm gonna kill all these guys. Where are you guys taking us? They're taking us to a green grave. Today, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> Damn, it's very cool. Canada. This event is going to be a shooting event. We're gonna win this. This is easy. Team, you're still going, buddy! Woo! Let's freaking go! Let's go out there, leave it all on the mat, get some rest, do these matches. The war is on and I'm on the kill Check the technique, reach my peak For you to beat me, you gotta bring me to sleep Ultimate death trap,